I have a portfolio of websites today and a pretty large team of writers and my editors will take all this content from all these writers and post it across all my websites. So of course I need a pretty tight process for this so nothing falls between the cracks. And in this video I'm going to share with you exactly what my process is for checking every article before the, any editor can hit publish. The first thing my editor will check when she receives an article from one of the writers is to make sure that the writer has broken up the content so there's no walls of text anywhere. No paragraph should be more than five sentences long and most of the paragraphs should be just a line or two or three. I also ask my editor to look for any lists inside the content. I want that formatted as a bulleted list or a numbered list. I also ask her specifically to bold a sentence or part of a sentence for every screen length on a laptop. And the last thing here is actually not a formatting tip, it's more on the content side of things. I ask my writers to remove all fluff from the introduction. I don't want any cute stories about why they came to get this knowledge that they share in this article. I just want straight forward information so the reader will immediately see that we know what we're talking about and we have this good information for them because that'll keep them engaged in the article. Nobody wants to read cute introductions about how you learned boating and what you did as a child or whatever. It just gets straight to the point. The next point on the checklist is images. I want one really really good image at the top of the article just after the table of content. And that's also what we're going to upload as the featured image. You also need to set that featured image. Even though if you're not showing it on the blog post, it needs to be there for the blog role or the front page or wherever. So you have this picture attached to the article. So put that on the checklist as well. And then I typically don't put any images down further down in the content. Just this one image at the top. And that's because I'm monetizing all my websites with ads. So I want to make space for ad slots down the article. And these ads will typically be banner ads, so it'll be a lot of visual stuff. And if we try to cram in 5 or 10 pictures in a 2000 word article, it'll be way too many images when you have all these banners and the pictures in conjunction all the way down. So just keep one or two images in the article and allow space for ads. And the next thing I want you to check is the title of the article. I don't allow my writers or even my editor to make changes to the titles because I want them to be just perfect so I write them out all of those myself. So go into Google and type in some search phrases that should trigger your article as it starts to rank and check out what number one and two and three is doing up there. See how they compose these titles. You want a better click rate here than all the other guys so write an enticing title so people actually click it because then you'll slowly move past all the other ones in the search result page if you have more clicks to your site. So you'll get more traffic and you'll probably move up the rankings faster. The next thing on the checklist is to check the URL. You want to remove little stop words like for, and, to and so on. Remove those and keep the URL short, concise and just straight to the point. The next thing on the checklist is to remember to insert this table of content toward the top of the article. This enables people to jump to the section they actually came for. You know, we write longer and longer content and that also means that some people will be searching for something that's buried deep down into the article. You need to make it easy for them to jump to that part of the article. And studies show that you can reduce the bounce rate by up to 20% by putting in the table of content toward the top of the article. Bounce rate is just a fancy word for how many people leave your site right away when they land on it. And also when you put this table of content there, that will generate these links that Google will take and place under your listing in the search result page. This is also a great way to make sure that you don't mix up any H2 or H3s. So when you take a good look at this table of content before you hit publish, you'll see if there's any inconsistencies. Maybe you wrapped one headline in the wrong tag and you will see that it's not formatted all right. It's a great way to make sure that you got all these titles just right and that all of those are wrapped in the right H2, H3, H4 and so on. The next couple of tips are for the content itself and to make sure that you have the best possible article. The first thing you should do is to take the best part of the article and place it at the very top. Let's say it's an article about 5 best ways to or 15 best destinations for or 18 ways to or whatever. If it's a list post, take the very very best and the most clever tips and place those 1, 2 or 3 at the very top. Because people will get impressed early on as they start reading and they'll expect good stuff all through the article. 
And also make sure to not mention any current events or so on, because if people are finding this article two or three or four years from now, we don't want them to read about current events like who won the Olympics or who's the president or so on, because that'll instantly show that this is an old article and we want to be able to rank this article for many years to come. And also, don't keep a list of keywords that you need to stuff into the article. Don't think like you should mention this word 10 times or this word eight times and so on. That's an old way of doing SEO. Don't do it. Just write the best possible content for this topic. And then eventually when you're doing the editing here before you hit publish, make sure that you actually mention these words. It's great to just make sure that you have these keywords inside the article, but don't force the writer or yourself when you write it to mention it a certain number of times. The last tip here in regards to the content itself is to run everything through Grammarly. It's a great plugin that will reveal any wrong sentence structures or misspellings. And actually you should do this as you write it or ask your writers to do it as they write it. It shouldn't be part of the editing process. But if they haven't done so, make sure to check it here. And if anybody else and yourself wrote this content, make sure that you or the editor check that it's actually original content. I do this with Grammarly that I just showed you. They have a nice feature built in for this. And the next thing to check is all the links inside the article. Make sure to link to other articles on your site whenever it makes sense. That's what we call internal links. Because if you get the reader to click and read another article on your site, you will add more ad revenue because they will see more ads on that next page. And that's a great way to earn more money with the same content that you already have sitting there on the site. And whenever you're linking out to external content, make sure to double check that these links will open in a new window because we want to keep the reader on the site. We don't want them to leave through this link. They might leave, but then when they close that tab, they will have your article sitting there behind it in the current tab. I also have a few tips for you for after you hit publish. If this is a brand new website and you're writing the first batch of articles, let's say you have only five or 10 articles on the site, Make sure to submit every article into Search Console. If you don't know how to do this, check the video up here where I show you exactly how you should utilize Google Search Console for your site. It's important to do this because otherwise it might be a couple of weeks before Google finds this content. It'll just be way longer before you start ranking for this article. And also if you have any social profiles, make sure to pin your articles on Pinterest if you're using that or share it on Facebook or whatever. And give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and the little bell below. I'd love to have you a part of the community here on my YouTube channel. See you guys in the next video.